Today we're checking out the Ornata Chroma by Razor. This is it right here in case you're wondering. Welcome to JK from a box. I'm Sergio AM. And before we begin, I just want to say thank you to all of you watching, commenting, liking, subscribing. That's four things because we buy everything on this channel and that can get pretty expensive. So it's because of all of you that we made enough to purchase this keyboard, which a lot of you have requested. This is because of you guys. I hope this goes to show that whatever amount of funds we make here goes straight back into the channel to produce more and better content. So thank you very much for that. So the Ornata, it is the first in Razer's new line of hybrid keyboards, which they say combines the most desirable traits of membrane rubber dome design with the merits of mechanical keyboard technology. To keep it simple, it pretty much feels like an upgraded membrane keyboard that borrows some things from mechanical and leaves some behind. So let's start with the box and we'll go from there. All right, a quick look at the box. We've got their prominent green on all sides, so it's easy to spot in a store. On the front, we have the keyboard, the Ornata, in this glossy print, and you'll see it's attached to the wrist rest, which they mention is included on that label above. Down here on the arrow keys, we have that cutout, which I love, so you can actually try it out and test that mecha membrane feel in store before you actually buy it. Top right, we have that Razer logo. Below that, we have that Chroma label because this is a Chroma enabled device. As we can see on the left here where it says Razer or Nada Chroma. Then on the back, they highlight the top features of this keyboard, which is the Mecha membrane, mid-height keycaps, and the Chroma lighting. On the top side, we have some quick specs and let's go through those. Starting with the layout, which is QWERTY, although I wish they had more information as in what kind of bottom row, etc. Uh, then we have the package contents, which we'll go through later. System requirements, so it's compatible with Windows 7 or higher. And unlike previous versions, we have no Mac OS label, although it is listed right there as compatible with PC or Mac. And then we have dimensions, but we're going to go through that later. So there it is encased in its uh, plastic prison. And behind this box here, we have our fancy braided cable. And this is the nice and sturdy wrist rest. Very nice. And now it's free. This is the Ornata. Funny enough, it looks very plain and simple without that lighting going. But I, I will say I do like the weight and feel of it. And of course, we have that razor green paperwork with those razor stickers sandwiched right inside. The Razer Ornata features a full-sized ANSI layout with a standard bottom row. So that means we have no additional macro or media keys, which are unnecessary when you think about the fact that every key here is fully programmable, so you can assign a macro to any you'd like. As for media keys, they're available as additional functions to the top row, but I do wish they removed the notifications and placed them on the keys themselves, which would have been nice for dedicated volume or media keys. Back to that top row, most of these are pretty common. We have media keys, volume, and playback. Then there's brightness control and sleep function. We also have two additional ones, and the first is a dedicated macro record button that allows for on-the-fly macro recording. So you can do something like um, a crazy weapon swap in Counter-Strike and uh, map it to a key on the spot. The second is gaming mode, which disables your choice of Alt-Tab, Alt-F4, and the Windows key, so you don't have to worry about pressing those, kicking you out of that game. So the keys are about the same size as the Deathstalker, but there's a bit more spacing beneath the top row, and there's a lot less dead space outside of the keys. There was a lot of plastic around the Deathstalker. As for dimensions, we'll check out both with and without the wrist rest. The Ornata has a length of 18.22 inches, with a width a bit over 6 inches, a height of 1.22 inches, and it weighs in at about 2 pounds. Now, when connected with the wrist rest, the length remains the same at 18.22 and so does the height at 1.22, but the width increases to 8.82 inches and the weight to 2.78 pounds. So I compiled all that info for you in this list here so you can just pause and read through it if you'd like. I've also included the dimensions of the wrist rest by itself and the dimensions of the Deathstalker for comparison. I'm very glad to see that Razer is continuing with this specific design philosophy because the Ornata looks sleek and professional. 
The Ornata is encased in a very sturdy and tough plastic that has this very light um, grit texture to it. So when you need to move or adjust it, your fingers have something to grip onto instead of slipping. That frame, as you can tell, is very linear in design with beveled edges throughout, including the cutouts for the keys. Now, the outer edges are very steep, especially the one at the front, and I believe the reason for it is due to that wrist rest. Unlike Razer's Deathstalker, this keyboard isn't very low profile. It stands a little bit taller, so I'm very glad they included a detachable wrist rest, which is made of the same sturdy plastic materials as the keyboard itself. At the front edge, we have this very convenient cutout at the bottom, which helps with picking it up whenever you want to remove it. Very nice little feature there. At the top, you'll notice that it slopes inward because that's where it connects to the front edge on the keyboard. The way it does that is with magnets, but slightly weak magnets. Not sure exactly what the thought behind it was, but this makes it so you don't really get that satisfying snap when they come together. But from our testing, they are strong enough to not move or budge during intense use, which is the important part. Also, being that it's detachable, you can move it around and try it in different positions along your arm, which I found satisfying, especially if the keyboard is towards the center of the desk instead of on the edge of it. The cushion lining the top is leatherette, if I said that correctly, but I'm gonna just call it pleather. It's very soft, slightly elastic, and it feels pretty thin. So much so that I fear with time it may wear down or stretch out the material, leaving it looking like a really old, saggy leather seat. Fears aside, it's actually very comfortable and I, I like using it. I'm really glad that Razer finally included one instead of selling it separately. Back to the pleather, we never noticed it stick or grip to our palms, so when you need to travel around the keyboard, your wrist just glides along with your fingers, which makes using this keyboard really fun and of course helps reduce wrist fatigue. It's almost like a, like a comfy chair for your hand's butt, if that makes any sense at all. This time around, we have a lot of restraint with Razer's logo. On the keyboard's front edge, we have their latest logo type right where it connects to the wrist rest and then Razer's icon over on the wrist rest itself. Back here, we have a non-removable braided cable which adds a layer of protection and prevents it from tangling. It's very sturdy. They also added this handy rubber cable tie so you can adjust the size instead of running the full length of the cord when you don't need to. I've stated this before, but I wish this was a detachable cable, not only because then you could use whatever cable you want, but since it's not removable, if anything happens to it, you're going to need to either void your warranty and open up the keyboard to replace it, or send it in, which can take weeks. Now let's turn it over. Once again, we have cable routing up here. Sadly, the concept hasn't been improved upon since we last saw it on the Black Widow X. The teeth are still way too tight, which yes, it helps keep the cable in place, but if you're someone who constantly switches it around, it may dent the cable, which can potentially damage it. Then on each corner, we have decently sized rubber feet or pads, but sadly not in the center. So if you try to push it from the edges, you'll notice that it slips around a bit, but that doesn't really occur when using it. Now, when you connect the wrist rest, you'll notice that it becomes a lot more stable, and that's because, like the keyboard, it has rubber feet at each corner, but better yet, it also has one down the middle. Wish they did that with, you know, the bigger and heavier keyboard that probably needs it. Last thing back here is the two retractable feet with only one level of incline, and sadly, no rubber bottom, which actually makes the keyboard pretty unstable during use. If I had to describe it, these mecha membrane switches feel like a lighter MX Blue. They're loud and responsive, yet I personally wish they went with something like the silent MX Browns, or at least provide an option of clicky and silent. Wanting to find a good mix between a full height mechanical keycap and a chiclet key, Razer has created these mid-height keycaps. They're light, small, and feel just about the same as the full height ones when in use. They also share a similar curvature from them, which helps with control that chiclet keys tend to lack, but because of that size, you then have a shorter travel distance between the switch and the activation point. I noticed that the most in first person shooters because I normally would pound down the keys the way I would on the Black Widow, when that much force really isn't necessary with the Ornata. As for materials, these keycaps are made of ABS plastic with a matte finish that sort of grips to your fingertips. It's, it's not as slippery as the ones found on the Black Widow. But due to that texture, they also absorb all the oils from your fingertips, which is a pain to clean. Then over here on the letters and characters, they seem to be laser engraved so they can illuminate from the bottom. And this works well enough, but I did notice that they do kill off a bit of the brightness. It diffuses it. 
The Ornata features 10 key rollover, but after testing it, I was able to get 14, which should be enough for most cases. As for typing, it took a bit of time to get used to. I don't believe the keys are spaced out differently than, say, the Black Widow line, but something about these mid-height keycaps makes them feel a bit closer together and easier to reach. So now, let's listen to how it sounds. The feedback you get from each key press makes typing really fun. It's similar to that of a spring in a mechanical switch, but um, a bit more gentle and because of that membrane, gives it a cushiony feel with less resistance. Another thing to keep in mind is that it also feels different when using it with and without the wrist rest. So there is one issue we had with the Ornata, which is slightly annoying, and I'm sure some of you may not care at all, but listen for yourself. Not sure if you can hear that. It's very subtle, but some of the keys actually sound different from others. But it's not just that, they also feel different, and that's the problem. Those that sound dampened like my U here actually feels like an entirely different switch. You'll notice if I press it from the center here as I would when normally using it, it sounds silent like a scissor switch. But if I press it from the bottom, it's clicky again. But then the eye next to it feels the same wherever you press it. So we have inconsistent switches here. They still register and work just fine, but they feel different. Like I said, the average consumer may never notice it, but for those who do, this can be a deal breaker here, and I'm hoping it only applies to my specific unit. Maybe it's just a lemon. I investigated a bit and pulled out those keys, which, by the way, were a slight pain to remove, and I was afraid that the plastic on the plunger would break. I then examined the keycaps and the switch itself, but found nothing wrong with them. Taking a closer look, that clicky sound comes from this blade back here, and when the plunger comes down and back up, it hits it, and creates that clicking sound. I'm only guessing here, but maybe some of these blades are spaced out more than others, which makes it difficult for the plunger to hit it. If that's the case, I have a slight fear that this is something that may happen the longer you use the keyboard. That aside, the Ornatic provides a softer typing experience. It almost literally feels like a mixture between a membrane scissor switch keyboard and a mechanical keyboard. It's, it's weird, it's odd, but I have to say, it's fun to experience something this different. One of the biggest advantages with gaming peripherals is the software, which allows for extensive customization. We're not gonna go that much into detail here, but this is the major difference that sets it apart from other peripherals out there. With Razer, you get Synapse, which I truly have grown to love, although I do wish they updated the UI a bit. At the bottom, you would select your device, and then you can program any key you'd like with a huge amount of options to choose from, including macros. You can then create multiple profiles for different games or software and assign them to shortcuts to activate wherever you'd like or link it to a program so it activates when it launches. Next, we have lighting, which we dedicate an entire section to, so let's go check that out. There's currently two versions of the Ornata. There's the Razer Ornata and this one, which is the Razer Ornata Chroma. Difference being that the normal one costs a bit less and only has green lighting, while the Chroma one costs a little bit more and has way more colors. Being that this is the Chroma version, that means we have 16.8 million colors to choose from and configure in many ways, including reactions and alongside select games. The LEDs on the Ornata are at the bottom of every switch. But due to that membrane in there, the lighting spreads throughout creating some very bright and vibrant lighting, which doesn't look as muddled down or diffused as I first thought it would. Also, another thing I noticed, since the plunger on these switches is this kind of translucent white plastic, the lighting almost shines through it, creating this effect that makes the keys look as if they're floating. So unlike the Deathstalker Chroma, which has zone lighting, or in other words, limited chroma features, with the Ornata, we have the full set available, including some new ones. Breathing fades in and out. By default, it'll go from one color and off, but you can add a second color so it fades in from one to another, or set it to random. Fire is a new one, and it's pretty simple. It just looks like there's a roaring fire going on behind your keys, and if you'd like, you can change those two colors to whatever you want. Reactive lights up keys as you press them, which looks really interesting. Ripple is like reactive, but instead of only lighting the key pressed, it ripples throughout the keyboard until it hits the end. Spectrum cycling is one of my favorites because it's just very calming. 
it just cycles through the full color spectrum. Starlight lights up random keys in whatever colors you want, and you can even tick on random, which looks awesome. Static, for a static color of your choice. And then Wave, which is probably one of the most well-known settings, and it allows you to choose colors that move throughout the keyboard, like a wave. This is the one that I use the most, and I customize it by using the colors of It Came From A Box, which is yellow and green, which should give you an idea of how you can utilize that setting. Aside from those, we also have Razer's Chroma apps, which you can enable in this tab. By doing so, you then gain access to integrated lighting effects that tie into a number of games from their workshop. As of this date, they currently support over 30, but that list is constantly growing. Let's take a quick look at how it works with something like Blizzard's Overwatch. When you launch the game, the keys turn orange, like in the Overwatch logo, and then when you're on the character selection screen, you'll see that each character has a color assigned to it, which ripples out. There's more to it than that. A more useful feature is having your key assigned to your ultimate glow when it's ready to use. So that's our quick look at Chroma options in Synapse, but do keep in mind that there's a ton more options available. All right, pros and cons, starting with pros. Solid construction. On our review of the Deathstalker, I mentioned how it felt cheap and light. The Ornata, although the same plastic, feels very solid and well-built, maybe due to that weight. Wrist rest, this thing right here. The wrist rest is a great addition that's very comfortable, which helps with wrist fatigue. And being that it's magnetic, you can adjust as you'd like. You don't have to have it attached. And if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. I hope I didn't break down. Chroma lighting. I've said this many times now, but Razer's chroma lighting is simply awesome. With the help of Synapse and the Chroma Workshop, you can not only customize it with a number of effects, but also make use of it in game so it's not just a gimmick. Great performance. I did have an issue with the way some of these switches felt, but nonetheless, they were very responsive, and thanks to these mid-height keycaps, the travel time, it just feels faster, and the membrane at the bottom gives you this nice bounce, which helps with spamming keys. Now for cons, we do have a few shortcomings. Grease magnet. The keys have this coating that absorbs the oil from your fingertips and creates this glossy, greasy look, which is a pain to clean, although the texture helps with playing. No extra keys. Personally, I don't miss dedicated macro keys. I never really use them after a while, but I do miss dedicated media keys, or at least a dedicated volume knob. Nonetheless, I've lived without it, and I'm sure you will too. Inconsistent feel. I'm not sure if this comes down to the switches themselves because they're actually very responsive, but I think it has to do with the blades on each switch, which seem to feel a little bit different and in the end provides an inconsistent experience. And finally, we have Compromise. Being that it's a hybrid, you get the best of both worlds, but the compromise here is that unlike mechanical keyboards where you can choose what type of switch you want, what kind of keycaps, what uh, dampeners or O-rings or whatever you want to call them, you're stuck with what you get. I'm hoping eventually they at least add a non-clicky version of the Ornata to that lineup. When it comes down to it, the Ornata feels like an upgraded version of the Deathstalker, but also works really well as an introduction to mechanical keyboards. If you want to try something a little less intimidating than mechanical, then this definitely hits that sweet spot. So with all that being said, let us know your thoughts. Do you love this? Do you hate it? And then tell us what you'd like to see next in the comments below. And we'll see you for the next box. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to help us out, you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe for more content? It's free. We also love to hear you out, so please leave a comment down below or talk with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Sergio IM, and I'll see you for the next box.